Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. Great, so now we know how much air is entering the room. And the next thing they want to know is how much chilled water is required. I'm going to skip over that one for now and jump to C. What are the temperatures of the air entering and leaving the coil? Well, let's start with the air entering the coil. What is the air entering the coil? It's a mix of recirculated air, which we can assume is the same temperature as the room, 75 degree return, and then some of that's being recirculated. But that's being mixed with outside air, which is 90 degrees. So there's this mixed air condition and that's what's hitting the coil. So we should be able to calculate what that mixed air temperature is, but we're gonna to need to know the relative volumes. So in the last part, we calculated that the supply air volume was 14,500. When we get around to here, there's gonna be some exhaust. How much exhaust? Well, the same amount as whatever outside air is being introduced. Well, how much outside air is being introduced? Five CFM per person and there's 600 people. So the volume of outside air is five CFM per person times 600 people. So that's 3000 CFM. So that's outside air being introduced and correspondingly that's exhaust air being removed. So the amount of return air that's getting recirculated is the difference between the total supply volume, 14,500, and the 3000 that's being exhausted. So that's going to be 11.5, but let's write it out. So the volume of the recirc is the total volume of supply minus the volume of the exhaust air. And these are not special formulas that you need to worry about memorizing. It's much more valuable to look at this picture and recognize, hey, I got 14,500 entering the room. It's the same amount coming out. And then when it gets to this point, some of it is exhausted outside and most of it is recirculated and then you have a mixing happening at this point here. So I really wanna stress that, understanding how to get from the drawing to the formula, not memorizing formulas. And I wrote EA here, but this could also be OA. I think I will change that. They're the same volume, they're both 3,000, so I'd get away with it, but let's be clear. So 14,5, I'm skipping units here, minus 3,000 equals 11,500 CFM. And now we can do that mixed air calculation. So our goal is to find out what's the resulting temperature of these two air streams of known temperatures and known volumes mixing together. So the temperature of the mixed air will be the 11,500 CFM times 75 degrees plus the 3,000 CFM times 90 degrees divided by the total CFM, 14,500, and that equals 78.1 degrees. That's the mixed air temperature, and that's the temperature of the air that's entering the coil. So that is another one of the answers that we need. And then the other question they asked was about the leaving coil temperature. And that's an interesting question because if you look at our simplified drawing up here, you're seeing that the supply air temperature is 60 degrees. So that might lead you to believe that the mixed air, which is coming in at 78 degrees, is being cooled to 60, and that's the whole story. And maybe that could be true, but I highly doubt it. And the reason why is because our sensible heat ratio was 0.79, so that means there is a significant amount of latent load, not so significant that it's below the 0.7 mark, and we have to take latent cooling into special consideration but enough that there is humidity to be removed. There does need to be some dehumidification happening. And that's probably not gonna happen if the air is only being cooled to 60 degrees because the dew point of this air that's entering, 78 degrees and relative humidity, that's probably well north of 50% because it was 50% coming back and it got mixed with this hot, humid outside air. There's a pretty good chance you won't get any dehumidification with a 60 degree coil. And we know we have chilled water being supplied at 42 degrees, which is plenty cold, and returned at 52. So I think the warmest that coil would be is 52. I took a glance at the solutions, and they answered this question 
of what's the leaving coil temperature by saying it's 51 degrees. But they did not provide any explanation for that. So I think 51 is pessimistic. That's assuming that the coil is going to be almost as warm as the chill water supply temperature. It's definitely a conservative approach. You could say it's 51. But I would argue that it's probably much closer to the chill water supply temperature, 42. I think a couple of degrees is, is likely, maybe 44, 45 degrees just off the coil. So I'm going to split the difference and call it 46. And that's my answer. So this is the air entering the coil. And then I'll define the temperature off the coil. I'll just call it T coil. Hopefully that's not confusing. This is the leaving air temperature just off the coil. I think it's going to be around 46 degrees. And if that's not the case, it's within a degree or two of that. And so if we want to look a little deeper into what's really going on inside this AC unit, there's almost definitely a bypass. So rather than 100% of the mixed air volume, 14,500 CFM, hitting the coil, it's likely that a significant percentage of it is being bypassed around the coil. So you could draw that kind of like this, up and around and then coming in here and skipping past the coil. It's not getting cooled at all, no sensible cooling, no latent cooling, nothing. But the fraction of volume that is hitting the coil is being cooled significantly such that its temperature is being reduced all the way to 46 degrees approximately, which is hopefully lower than the dew point, which means you're accomplishing a great deal of sensible cooling and a modest amount of latent cooling, which is required to meet the dehumidification needs of this application. Of course, that air is too cold. You don't want to supply 46 degree air. So you mix it after the coil with the mixed air that bypassed the coil, which is 78 degrees, and you take some portion of 46 degree air and 78 degree air, mix them together, and if you do that in the proper ratio, then the resulting supplier temperature will be 60 degrees, and that's what we need to go out into the space. This problem does not require us to get into that level of detail and figure out that ratio, but I think it's important to mention that this is going on because if we don't discuss it, then we're satisfied in saying there's some latent cooling happening and it seems almost magical, um, which was fine for part one in this problem when we assumed sensible heat ratio is greater than 0.7. We're going to ignore the latent load. That was enough to get us the total CFM. But when we're drilling down and asking a question like, hey, what's the temperature leaving the coil? I think we have to get realistic and say it's not 60 degrees, it's much lower than that. So we could debate whether it's 51 or 46 or 44, but it's definitely lower than the dew point. And uh, I'll leave it to you to pursue that further if it's of interest.